PMCs, private military contractors, mercenaries. What exactly is it? What do they do? Let's talk about it. Okay, so I am a former private military contractor, um, security specialist. There's a bunch of names that people think they're called or people go by, okay? Um, in the contracting community, you're basically one of two things. You're either mobile or you're static. Um, I was mobile security, which means um, I was a very well-paid bodyguard. Um, static security are the dudes that, like gate guard, stuff like that, right? The guys that check IDs, the guys that stand in the, you know, you know the... The posts, the towers and stuff, um, those dudes are not usually not paid as well and also usually not trained, they're trained a little differently too. Um, so we're not going to talk about that. I was never static security. I don't really understand what their training is or even know about it. So not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about mobile security. Okay. What is it? How to get into it? What's the training? And I'll put a few videos together talking about some other things. I won't go too deep into like TTPs or, you know, like our techniques or anything like that because yeah, I'm just not that kind of person. Um, but I will give you some little tidbits here and there about what we, what we, what I did, um, what they do and stuff like that. <music> Okay, so one, what is it? Well, it's mainly, I say mainly because it's not, nothing's ever absolute. And I'm comprised of a bunch of combat veteran, veterans of all the branches. Um, Coast Guards, the Coast Guard guys, um, a bunch of Navy dudes, uh, mainly SEALs. Uh, I think maybe one or two SWIT guys. Um, Air Force guys, we got, you know, um, a bunch of PJs. Um, a couple CCTs, stuff like that. Um, Marines, anywhere from your regular grunt Marine to, um, you know, force recon, stuff like that. Um, I don't even know, what are they called now? Are they called Raiders? Or are they called, I, don't, I don't even know what the fuck they're called now. But whatever they're called now, those guys, they were there. Um, Army, anywhere from regular infantry dude to Ranger Battalion, SF, Delta, the whole gamut. Um, Bunch of medics, you know, from every organization, things like that, okay? Um, so that's what it's comprised of. What is it? It is the, I don't want to say premier because I think people like CAG and DevGrew, I think those guys probably do it way better. But is let's just say the second premier um, security bodyguard force in the world. Why do I say that? Because... Um, from what I understand originally, how it got created, a bunch of former Delta Force guys, Dev Grew guys, Navy SEALs, SF guys, they all got together, threw all their TTPs, their techniques and everything in a bowl, swirled it around and said, what's the best product we can produce? And that's what they did. Um, if you dig kind of deep in the history, you'll go back a long, long time. This is basically the second oldest profession in the world. First, being prostitution. Second, being rich people, hiring thugs, <laughs> essentially, and paying them for protection, right? Um, it goes way back into, you know, before even the Roman times. Um, and throughout the Roman times, into like the Viking area, like the Vikings, uh, they were paid to go over to like Turkey in that area to be bodyguards and to be assassins. Um, and it continues all throughout today. So you have a bunch of dudes come together. Um, you go through a training, which we'll kind of get into a little bit. You, you're going to have a assessment selection process. We're going to go to one of various places. You're going to do training for a period of time. Throughout that period of time, they're going to assess whether you're, you, they think that you're good enough to be on the team. 
If you are, you're gonna graduate, they're gonna give you a piece of paper that says you are certified in this, and then you're going to go out to that company and you're gonna to fly to whatever location they're at and you're gonna start doing your job. Well, the bad part is they don't really give a shit about you at all, not even a little bit. They say they will just like everybody does, but they really don't. Um, there's always good, bad, and ugly in all, everything that you make money in. Um, I remember when I first talked to one of the recruiters, he, my, I got in there a little late in the game in 2011, and they said, hey, we're starting out at $500 a day. And I was like, $500 a day? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'll do whatever the hell you want me to do for 500 bucks a day. And I did not know that at the time, that was pretty low on the totem pole for money. Um, in the heyday of contracting, they were getting way more money. Um, so when I, when I did this and stuff, it was, that's how I started out. I started at $500 a day. I was what you call a window licker, which is, and we'll get, we'll get into kind of the positions and stuff, but I'm a low man on the totem pole. You know, you always start out that way. It doesn't really matter what you used to do. It only matters what you can do today, right? What can you provide them today? Um, if you're a medic, you still have to go through the entire WHIPS program, um, Worldwide Protective um, Security Specialist program. And then after that, you go to a separate like medic deal. Um, same with snipers, same with dog handlers, same with all that stuff. Any extra job that you do, you have to go through the original course first and then you do additional courses after that. Um, I know a bunch of dudes that were like Marine Corps snipers or SF snipers and stuff like that. You all go through the regular course and then you go to the DDM course, the designated marksman course, um, designated defensive marksman. Um, a lot of medics, like if you were an 18 Delta, I don't think you go to any other medic stuff. I'm pretty sure you just, I mean, you obviously know what you're doing. So you go right in to be a medic. Um, dog handlers, I'm not sure if they have to go to an extra thing. I think they do just to get, you know, acquainted with their dog. But besides that, that's about it. Um, how I got into it was I got out of the army in 09. Um, for two years, I went to college and I uh, was a manager of a forestry company. <laughs> I got a phone call one day from one of my friends who was in the Marine Corps and he said, Hey dude, um, what are you doing right now? And I was like, man, not much. He's like, Hey, why don't you come contracting for us? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he kind of gave me the rundown. Um, you know, basically he pays really good. You're going to get deployed and you're going to be with a bunch of cool dudes, blah, blah, blah. I was like, fuck, sign me up. So he put me in contact with the recruiter, called him, started doing all the paperwork and there's a lot of paperwork. It took three months just to get all the paperwork and all that stuff done. Um, had to do, you know, your background checks and all your stuff. If you have a DOD background check, that doesn't mean shit because now you're working for, you know, Department of State or whatever. So they have to do their own background check. Once it's all said and done, they said, hey, when's the soonest you can go to class? And you say, I can go to class next month or next week or whatever. They're going to give you a class date. You get on an airplane, you fly to whatever location that you're going to. I went to a location in Louisiana. I spent that three months doing paperwork um, prepping for this because I did not think I was good enough to be these guys because all you hear is stories about these are all former Delta Force guys. These are all former, you know, dev grew guys and they're all like super badass. So I spent three months training in weapons and, you know, getting back in shape because I was out of the army for a while. And when we showed up at the airport, you could tell who we were. I mean, you're a bunch of, I think at the time I was like 30, in my 30, 31, something like that. But a bunch of dudes in their late, you know, mid to late 20s and early 30s. And we were all in shape. You could, I mean, you could just tell, right? What opened my eyes was the very first time I met one of the instructors. We, as a group, he said, hey, if you guys are over here for training, for, um, at the time it was Triple Canopy, um, come over here. All 30, 40 of us, whatever it was, went over to the side, and he went up to something. It was four guys. He went up to them, and he gave basically gave them a ticket back home. Why? Because those dudes were not dressed appropriately. 
because everything about this job is to be a professional. 100% no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're a piece of shit, they don't want you. If you're going to act like a piece of shit, they don't want you. If you're going to dress like a piece of shit, they don't want you. The whole thing is you are a professional. Because, you know, it kind of sounds harsh, right? But if you think about it, who are the people we are coming in contact with every day? You know, the Secretary of State, you know, the ambassadors, you know, um, certain, you know, senators or representatives and all that stuff. So if you're going to represent the company and you are going to protect those highly, highly, you know, decorated dignitaries, then you need to look and act the part. Um, so after they kicked those dudes back, we all kind of like, whoa, shit, um, loaded up, went to the, um, our sleeping quarters. And there was like, I think we had like four dudes per room at the time, depending on how big your room was. Um, so man, we got comfy, right? We got cozy. Um, the first week was basically the physical fitness assessment and then shooting because those two things kick a whole bunch of people out. On our physical fitness test, it was not that difficult. However, that that kicked, I think, 13 people out, I want to say, something like that. And then we went right into shooting. You have to qualify on, at the time, it was a Glock 19, um, an M4, an M249 squad automatic weapon. Um, we had a, yeah, we had 240 Bravo, AK-47, M203, what else? Something, there's probably a couple more in there, I can't remember. So you had to qualify on all those weapons. A bunch of dudes, um, we had a bunch of guys from like the ATF and um, things like that, that had never shot a machine gun, like a fully automatic machine gun before. Um, so what you did, and, and they saw this and they would tell us this, you know, like we helped those guys out a lot, the guys that were in the military, because, you know, they had never done it before, but they're still good dudes. So you, you know, you teach them how to like, you know, hold it and, and brace and everything and push on the bipods and all that stuff. And a lot of those dudes qualified and we're good to go. Um, after you get done with all your weapons qualification, that, that got rid of, oh God, half the class is gone by now. Um, with just the initial, the PT and the weapons, half the class is gone. Um, from there, they split you up into like your little squads and you're going to do some, like squad training stuff. It was nothing super special. Um, the whole thing wasn't really special. What it was, was you're going to drink from a fire hose, as, as they call it. We're going to give you unbelievably tons of information and we're going to see how well you take that in and use it to your abilities. Um, with a bunch of guys that you have never fucking worked with before in your life, a bunch of dudes that are not from your military specialty, you know, because we had a, literally a melting pot of everybody, and, you know, a bunch of what you would call alpha males, a bunch of guys who think they're better than everybody else anyway, we're going to put you all together, and we're going to see how well you function. And it was honestly some unbelievably awesome training. And I say that because you got to experience what everybody else was thinking. Um, the instructors, again, they were a cadre of people from all over the world, from really, really high like SWAT team guys on, in huge cities to, you know, your, your, even a couple like regular cop people all the way from like, we had, I've met a couple Delta Force guys, a lot of SEALs, um, a lot of Force Recon dudes, things like that. And it was just a melting pot of everybody. And it was awesome because it was cool to learn pe different people's techniques that you have never, ever seen or heard from before. And with that said, we did a shitload of shooting. And when I say a shitload, I mean a shitload. You shot from moving vehicles. You shot from stationary vehicles. You shot in and around vehicles. You shot moving targets. You shot stationary targets. You shot with every weapon system known to man. You shot machine guns out of the back of a Suburban while you're driving. You shot um, your M4s while you're hanging out of the side of the door while the vehicle's driving. Jesus, you, I mean, we just shot and shot and shot and shot and shot. On top of that, we did um, a really awesome driver's course. Um, the driving course was 10 times better than when I went to the police academy and did their driver's course. Their driver's course completely sucked. 
like when you're like the contractor course was amazing. Um, one, we had professional drivers. We had professional race car drivers that were sitting in the passenger seat telling us how to drive. And when they told you stuff, it was in a, such a calm, matter of fact demeanor that they, you knew they weren't scared, so you weren't scared. When you're coming into a corner at 110 miles an hour and they're like, okay, slam on the brakes, do you know, threshold brake, left turn. Okay, now, you know, off the brakes, threshold gas. And they're, you know, you're telling you all this stuff of how to do stuff. And you are going into the corner at 110, slam on the brakes, sliding down, and then fishtailing into a right-hand turn. It was amazing. That won't come on. You don't want to tighten it up and wait until we get to the part up here where it's really nice and pretty dangerous. We're going to make that apex high on the board. We just want to see do I have enough road to my right hand. When you think you do, We drove on um, the wet track where they just basically take a fire hydrant and flood the track and you're doing donuts and stuff in that. Uh, let's see, we did Jeeps in the mud, Jeeps in the sand, um, a bunch of off-road driving. We did formation driving. So um, if you ever seen the movie Sicarios, the first one where they're going down in Mexico and you know, all those Suburbans are doing this, 
fucking beautiful. And that that's what we did. Um, everybody took turns being, you know, like a, the team lead or the shift leader. And we're calling out things. So you'd be like, prepare to J turn, prepare to J turn, prepare to J turn. All the vehicles get ready, execute, execute, execute. And then all vehicles, whether you have three, four, five in a convoy, whatever it is, all the vehicles are execute, executing the same thing all at once. It was awesome. Uh, we did barricades. I mean, where you're ramming other cars, blowing out your you know glass and your windows and stuff. Um, the one of the last things we did was we played a game where um, all these cars were junkyard cars, but they ran and they put tires on them. That's basically all they were. And we had a track that was I think a mile, a mile and a half, a couple miles long. And we would go around this track and we would pit maneuver each other. I'd pit maneuver this guy and then he would catch up to me and he'd pit maneuver me. And we did that until all of our tires were flat and then we did another lap with flat tires. Just to prove to, you know, prove to the drivers that, hey, you can still run on flat tires. You just got to know how to drive it. Um, yeah, your car is going to be fucked at the end, but you can still do it. And we did that. And then we did a lot, a lot, a lot of shoot house stuff. We would go in and we would execute missions, um, all different types of missions. And we would go in and, you know, hostage rescue stuff. You know, we would go in and hard point in an area and have to defend the area. We would um, get contact while we were in the convoy. How would we respond to that? Every different type of scenario you can come up with, we did it. Um, they, they were very meticulous about... If you fuck up, you're gone. There was a dude in the class before us that the day before he graduated, um, they were doing a, I want to say it was a hostage rescue. They went to a back room. The hostage was in the corner. Bad guy was in the closet, but the uh, bad guy shoved his, his muzzle out of the closet, fired a few times, and shut the closet door. Contractor went in, almost got hit, came around, and blasted the door. Okay. He did not have a positive idea of his target and got fired the day before. Um, so the training, awesome. Um, you get paid while you're training. Um, it's not that much, but you do. We Our training was six days on, one day off. And we trained, oh, fuck, man, anywhere from eight hours a day to 12 to 16 hours a day. I mean, just depending on the day and what we were doing, uh, whether we were doing night training or whatever. But it was awesome. Training was awesome. We also did a lot of things of uh, like if you were to plan out, plan something out. We we uh, planned out going to a venue, how they want it, you know, the aerial photographs, the you know, the routes because you have to have you know primary, alternate, contingency, emergency routes. Um, when you're at the venue, if you're in advance, which is somebody that goes to the venue a week or a couple of days ahead of time and kind of scouts it out. Um, what do you do when you're in advance? Um, what do you do like when you're in the receiving line like um, you see the president like they go and they're shaking hands with everybody There's a shitload of people and there's all the security guys around and you see them. That's a That's called a receiving line and we, we learn how, what to look for in that kind of situation uh, Anything you can think of that a bodyguard would do that's what we did And then from there we did a lot of vehicle stuff uh, Like I said, we did a lot of vehicle driving, but we did a lot of other things like hey how fast can you change a tire? So, you know, you got to pull security, you got to do this. And we, you know, bump, bump, like NASCAR and change, change the tires on the Harmer Suburbans and stuff. Um, it was an excellent, awesome experience. And I'm so glad that I was able to do that because I really didn't think I was good enough. Um, I didn't think that my resume was good enough because you have to have, this was back then, I don't know what it is now, but you had to have like, two years deployment, you had to have, you know, this, this, and this, and combat experience, blah, 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 um, in order for them to take you. But, you know, coming as a, a regular infantry guy that just had some cool guy schools, you know, I didn't think that they would even want me one, and number two, that I was good enough to do it. Um, I only th thank, thank myself for not believing in myself, because what that did was that gave me, gave me a huge drive to and make sure I was completely prepared to go there. Um, a couple of the things that they told me was, hey, you know, your PT test is going to be this. So prepare for it. Okay, not a problem. You know, um, here's some of the gun things we're going to do. And here's some of the par times. You have to get those in order to graduate. If you don't get those, you're going home. So prepare for those. Okay, got it. 
and I went out and bought like 3,000 rounds and every day I spent running, and I, at the time I lived on a ranch at about 9,000 feet. So every day I was running up and down um, this road on the ranch. And it was, it was awesome. I got there, I loved it. The training was great. Um, some of the guys that I met, I'm still friends with today. Um, and I mean, it's just an unbelievably awesome experience because a lot of the dudes that I met, I would have never, ever, ever met dudes like that. You know, like uh, I have a friend now, it's a, um, he was he was one of my deltas, one of my medics over there, and now he is a um, an ER surgeon over in the Boston area. Amazing. Uh, another one of my friends uh, left uh, Department of State Contracting, went to OGA Contracting. Um, from OGA Contracting, he went to what they call a direct hire for the agency. So that he's doing cool guy stuff over there, and we still talk all the time. I mean, it's pretty. It's a great experience, and if you can get in, I highly suggest it. But I would say this, really do your homework. There's a whole bunch of dudes out, especially on YouTube, that want to talk about contracting that have never, ever done the job. They, they hear about it, you know, people talk about it, but they've never even done it. They have absolutely no idea what the fuck they're talking about, and you can tell from the first sentence coming out of their mouth. And it kind of pisses me off because there's a whole bunch of dudes out there that have been doing it and have been doing it a really long time. I did it for six years, and... The thing is, is those dudes are, are the kind of guys that won't talk about it, you know? Um, and they're the quiet professionals. Um, if you get them alone with a beer, they'll talk about it all day long, but they won't do something like this. Now, I've been out of the game for long enough that a lot of my experiences, you know, they're pretty all anecdotal, and it's been a long time since I got out, so I know the game has changed, so that's okay. Um... But if you do get in, just expect this. When you're even when you're on project, um, you're not. How do I say this? Everything's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be how you think it's going to be. You you may not have your own room. You may have a roommate. Um, you're going to have to do weapons qual every. I think it was every rotation we did. It's like every three months. Um, you have to do a PT test every three months. Um, you have to stay in shape. If you're not staying in shape, they'll just boot your ass out. Um, we did a piss test every single time we came back. Um, so our rotations were 110 days on, 35 days off. Um, that 35 days included travel. So really you were home for about 30 days. During that 30 days, you do not get paid. You do not get paid unless you're at work. Um, visas, the country that you're going into has to approve your work visa, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan or some shithole in Africa, they have to approve your work visa. If they do not, you will not leave. Uh, trust me on that. You will sit on your ass on your couch wondering what the hell's going on and calling your company every damn day going, what the hell's going on? Um, I've experienced it. It sucks really bad. On top of that, um, taxes. Holy shit. If you're going to be a contractor, there, there are specialized tax people that only work with contractors that will do your taxes and they will get you way more fucking money than anybody else will. Because I went for my, for my normal tax guy and I said, this does not sound right because I was getting taxed for, you know, an American job. Plus I was getting Afghanistan taxes taken out. I was like, this does not sound right. I'm not getting back very much money. Called a guy in California. He was like, I'll take your stuff. I sent it to him. He got me an extra, I think it was like twelve or $15,000. I like money. So yeah, did that. Um, there's, there's a bunch of little stuff in there and throughout this video series, I want to talk about it. Um, as far as the companies themselves, I'm, I, I don't want to speak ill against any company because my experiences that happened a long time ago may not be the same thing that's going on right now. Um, I'll just say that there are some good companies and there are some bad companies. Try to do your homework when you're deciding what company you want to work for. Um, if you go to their website and you fill out the, I want to be a contractor form and you send in your stuff, you will never get a job guaranteed. You have to know somebody, you have to call the company, you have to find a recruiter dude that's going to know your name and call you back. Um, that's the way it is. Like, for example, I was two months into my stuff and my recruiter calls me and says, Hey, do you want a fucking job or not? And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, are you going to do this stuff? I'm like, dude, I sent it to you like three or four weeks ago. He's like, you did? I go, yeah. Well, I went into his, in his you know, trash thing on his email. 
So he had to look. He's like, oh, fuck, dude, I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, I'll expedite your stuff. So crazy shit happens. Um, but like I said, man, you're going to meet some awesome dudes. You're going to meet. I know guys that are on a bunch of gun channels now. And they're in magazines and all kinds of shit. And they're real super popular. And back then, they are just, you know, one of my instructors or that dude with a certain nickname, you know. Um, and that's all it was. But now all these guys are their cops or their personal instructors now, or the, you know, they're, like I said, it's not, a lot of them are on TV and doing things, which is again, pretty cool. Um, my experience doing that was awesome. And I take that all the way into everything I do today, because not only do you, you learn how to work with people that have the similar skill set, but are different, but they, everybody teaches you something different, right? Everybody. Um, I would go to a lot of Marine Corps snipers because, you know, they're, they're really good snipers. And I would ask them questions all the time. And, and everybody there is more than willing to help you out in whatever you're doing. But on that same note, everything there is a competition. When you take 150 dudes, or maybe more sometimes, and you have one gym or one shooting range or, you know, one mat room, everything's a competition everything. I fucking bench more than you. I run faster than you. I fucking shoot better than you. You know, we had a, a dude in the Navy. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was a sweet guy. Um, we were at the range one day and he comes up to me and he, good dude. Um, good, good friend. And he's just down on himself. I'm like, Hey, what, you know, what the fuck's going on, man? He's like, dude, I, I fucked up my qualification. I'm like, what, what happened? And he, th he threw, so, um, on your qualifications, you're not allowed to miss period. So he threw one round and they're like, all right, you got to redo it. You get two or three chances. I want to say three chances until you, you go home. So I, you know, we, we, he was down on himself. He wasn't feeling good. So we ran around the corner. We were bullshit. And I said, Hey man, you know, just the fucking it's done with leave the fucking pass behind. Who gives a fuck. I'm like, go out there on my next rotation, you know, be next to me. I'll fucking, you know, I'll help you out. It's like, okay. And I go, Hey, and another thing, quit fucking it up. It's that simple. Like, you know how to fucking shoot. Stop being fucking stupid. And what happened? Went out there, my, my time to go. He went out there, traded with some dude, uh, stood beside me, and we both shot, and he did fucking awesome. Um, and it's that kind of stuff that really the contracting world's about. Like I said, I still have friends today that I can call up and talk to. I still have medics. Uh, I still have snipers. You know, I have all kinds of friends that I can call and ask questions, and I do all the time because... You know, I don't know everything. I know a little bit about a little bit, but I don't know everything. I got a dog handler buddy that when I wanted when I wanted to get into um, these kind of dogs here, he was the one that I called and talked to and asked him a thousand questions about dogs. Why? Because he knows a shitload more about these fucking dogs than I do. You know, he worked with them for many, many years. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put out a series of videos about the contracting world Kind of what we did. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, get out. Really? So I put out a bunch of videos about the contracting world, what we did, and uh, some of the jobs that we had. Um, and, you know, the good and bad points about it all, right? Because there's always good and bad points about it. All right. Until next time, remember, every time you leave the house, ask yourself, are you an asset or a liability? What are you doing? Get over here. Get over here. What are you doing? Get over here.